All right, how's it going, y'all? So today I'm really excited because we're finally going to go ahead and do a huge series on TrueNAS Scale. So today this is going to be the very first video and this is going to be on installing TrueNAS Scale and just some overall, hey, what do you need to get set up and should you use TrueNAS Scale or TrueNAS Core? And we're going to be installing it in my new super micro all SSD massive video editing server that I'm about to deploy. I'm still looking in between working with either TrueNAS Scale or TrueNAS Core for my full video editing system. TrueNAS Core, from what I understand, is going to be a little bit faster with a lot of things, but specifically when it comes to a read-write heavy intensive thing, such as video editing for really small IOPS over an SMB server, we gotta see that out. So that's gonna be also one of the videos in this series. But overall, I'm gonna be looking at installing this thing and we're going to be setting it up with a pool and a VDEV and everything you need to actually go ahead and get started for most users. And I will actually be having chapter markers for this video, so go ahead and skip ahead if you already know about all your things. So those will be down in the description below in that little progress bar in the bottom. All right, so now let's go ahead and get started and talk about what is TrueNAS Scale and what is TrueNAS. So TrueNAS is a NAS operating system that is totally open source and it pretty much has ZFS at its heart. So ZFS is a very special file system that is unlike pretty much any other file system. And because of that, it does have some special requirements. I'm not gonna go into those super in depth here. I have a video on that that I'll link in the description below, but we'll touch on it here. So pretty much TrueNAS allows you to set up storage via ZFS and present to the network. It can either be over SMB, NFS, iSCSI, pretty much anything you like. Although with TrueNAS Scale, you no longer can use AFP. Mac OS users should get to SMB if they want to. Apple's deprecated the protocol for a long time. You should get off of it. And so originally, TrueNAS was FreeNAS. So if you ever see FreeNAS in the forums, that's why. So FreeNAS turned into TrueNAS. And it was originally based off of FreeBSD. FreeBSD is very similar to Linux but just different. It broke off versus the BSD version versus Linux version. They're all based off of the Unix core way back in the day, but they're not really compatible in between two systems. And so originally, FreeBSD was the heart of FreeNAS and then TrueNAS core. The problem with that is it is not nearly as common of an operating system as Linux is. And so because of that, driver compatibility was not great. It was really stable. But because it was kind of outside of what most people are developing for, it did not receive a ton of drivers, and it also did not receive all these cool features that are going to Linux, such as Docker. And so because of that, they recently unveiled TrueNAS Scale. So TrueNAS Scale is a Linux version of TrueNAS. And so that's what we're going to be installing today. Linux has far better compatibility with different drivers and everything like that, and it also has Docker. It also has a bunch of other apps that are just written for it and a lot easier to port over. And so that's why they've set it up. So TrueNAS Scale is really perfect for your home lab if you wanna be able to run a bunch of things on your NAS itself. And then TrueNAS Core is the super stable beast that's gonna be around for a while because it's just so stable. I do think the future of TrueNAS is going to be TrueNAS Scale just because of the advantage of running Linux is going to outweigh BSD, I think, in the future, just because of driver compatibility and being up to date on the most advanced things. I do think that BSD will eventually go away, but that's not gonna be for quite a while. And so today we're going to be installing TrueNAS Scale on this machine right here and setting it all up. So this right here is my all SSD video editing server. And there's a couple of key components I wanted to point out for anybody who's looking to build a server like this. This was all bought off of eBay and just piecemealed together. So this has 24 SAS ports up front that actually all, because of this backplane, all lead into their own cable into three HBAs back here. And so this backplane is special because all 24 ports up front, there's no SAS expander, they're all directly plugged in back here. And these are three different SAS cards and each one of them can handle eight drives. And so I've got every single one of the ports up here plugged directly into its own HBA. And it's really crucial that if you are gonna be using TrueNAS and therefore ZFS, you cannot have a RAID card. You need to make sure you have a HBA or a host bus adapter 
which essentially just plugs the drives directly into the CPU. Rather than first going through its own computation, it just passes everything directly into the CPU and lets the CPU handle the RAID, which is required for ZFS. And then right here, I've got a 25 gig Intel NIC that I'm very excited to test out. I don't quite have the full 25 gig setup here, so we're gonna be running it in 10 gig, but I'm very excited to check that out. And I also have 128 gigs of RAM. You will see that ECC RAM is required for TrueNAS. That is not strictly true. ZFS will perform better without ECC RAM than a regular file system without ECC RAM. But any file system without ECC RAM has the capability to possibly become corrupted. It's a very low chance, but it is possible. So if you're running super crucial things that just cannot possibly get corrupted or you're dead in the water, use ECC RAM. But if it's going to be a huge cost for you and it's just your own home lab stuff, ECC RAM is not totally required. I would just recommend having a good backup. Essentially, there is a tiny chance in the case where a bit actually is flipped on non-ECC RAM that your entire file system could be corrupted but it is so, so small, and it's incredibly unlikely to happen, though theoretically could. More likely what would happen is a single file would get corrupted, but it's pretty still unlikely to happen just because there's not that often that bits flip. I mean, if you think about it, your computer probably does not have ECC RAM, so nothing bad tends to happen, though sometimes you do get a crash from that. I'm not gonna go into that too much there, but it is possible, and so if you do have the money and it is crucial data, ECC RAM's the way to go, and lots of it. This is 128 gigs, and ZFS uses RAM as a great read cache and a write cache as well for po pushing into VDEVs incredibly well. So the more RAM you have, the faster you're going to be able to be reading, especially if you're reading the same data over and over. Now that being said, if your active data, essentially the data you're reading over and over and over again in a current project is only 10 gigs, Having 128 gigs of RAM is not gonna help you that much more if you just had 64 gigs because those 10 gigs that are using over and over and over again are gonna be in the RAM regardless. But if you are having a larger active set, the more you can put, the better it will be and the more likely something will not have to get brought from disk but instead can just be brought up from RAM. All right, so now with that out of the way, let's talk about our boot media. And I've got two redundant, really cheap, 240 gig SSDs. They were like 25 bucks on Amazon. And it's just having two different drives in here for redundancy. Honestly, you don't even have to have it. With an SSD especially, they don't fail that often. But I just figured they were cheap, I may as well go for it. And the way TrueNAS works is your boot media, what installs the operating system, is going to be different than your actual media that is storing your files. And so if you are using TrueNAS, you need to make sure that you've got dedicated boot drives that will not have any data on them for the actual file system. So up front here, I've got eight SSDs populated already. I'm gonna bring in another eight eventually from my other server that's currently running. And they're all gonna be made up of two RAID Z1 VDEVs. And so that is the setup. You just need to make sure you've got separate boot media. A flash drive will work fine as well. My current TrueNAS server is booting off of a flash drive and it's gonna work just fine. Just know flash drives are more likely to fail than obviously a full SSD. But as long as it's just your own thing and you're fine fixing it, it's not that big of a deal. It's totally up to what is required for you. All right, and so now with that all out of the way, let's go ahead and get started in installing this thing. All right, and so now I've just gone ahead and got my laptop up here. I put in my boot drives as well as all the other drives and I have downloaded true NAS scale. Then we're going to need something to boot from, basically installation media. I'm gonna use this SSD, way too big, but it runs fast and I don't have a flash drive on me right now. And we're going to be using a program called Etcher. This will work with both Mac OS as well as Windows. I'll leave a link to it and it makes it very easy to make boot media. So just go ahead and plug in a hard drive that you're fine formatting. Or if you know about partitions and you can do that, do that. But all it's gotta be is a few gigs. I think it's like three gigs. So it does not have to be too big. And we're gonna go ahead and open up Etcher. All right, and so now that we've opened up Etcher, we just need to flash from a file. And select the ISO. And for our target, we're going to select the drive. 
make sure this is going to format it. It's going to get mad at me because, hey, why would you use a 500 gig SSD for this? Because I've got it. And so I'm going to say, yes, I'm sure. And it is going to go screaming fast. And just like that, it is already done. That's why I love using SSDs like that. They're just so much faster for this process. And so now that that's done, we just need to go ahead and boot this thing up and actually go through the install process. Because this thing's a screamer, I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my server rack and then I'll be back. All right, and so now I'm back. The server is in the rack and I've already plugged in that boot media. Luckily, this build has what's called IPMI which means I am able to totally remote control this from my laptop right here, and you'll be able to see everything. It's got its own dedicated port, which means it's basically got a little Raspberry Pi essentially in there that can control the entire machine, including show me the output of the screen. So I'm just gonna go ahead and log into that now. And what is absolutely awesome is we can just go into remote control, pull up the console, And just like that, we'll boot her on. And this is currently running, as you can see, a SATA 2 bus. And so what that means is every single one of those cards and the backplane are all SATA 2. And so SATA 2 is 6 gigabit. Now there's SATA 3, which is 12 gigabit. But those SSDs I've got are all SATA drives. And so that means that they are just going to be running at the SATA 3 speeds, even though that's the SAS 2 bus speed. And so that's why I didn't go for SAS 3. Y'all have no idea how long it took me to get to this menu. I can finally select my boot device. That was way too difficult. So I'm now going to boot from that device. Just figure out for a device. This was not a good experience. I was just spamming the F11 key and eventually I think it worked. But now we are finally in, so we'll finally be booting from the actual installation media. And then I can finally go ahead and install TrueNAS scale on this thing. And so now we're just going to use the standard installation and you just use your arrow keys to get through this. All right, and so we are going to install this thing. All right, and so now we get to choose our boot media that we would like to install this thing on. So we can see I've got these two Kingston SSDs I'm gonna use spacebar to dual select them and it will set them up in a RAID Z1, well, actually just a mirrored array. And so either one of them can fail and it will just work. So I'm going to select the two and just hit enter. It's going to say, hey, we are going to have this thing uh, formatted. Okay. And this is going to be your root password. So make sure to keep this safe. And I would highly recommend setting a swap partition just because if you don't have swap, bad things can really happen. And so it's better to have it and never use it than never have it at all. And now it's just gonna go ahead and install the actual media on here. It's gonna be great. All right, we are now going to reboot the system. And I would highly recommend removing the installation media just so you don't accidentally boot back into it again, which would be very annoying. But for me, I have to just select the new boot device and make it the default. And I do that for me by just spamming F11, it seems like. Who knows? Finally worked. I Y'all y'all miss out on like 30 minutes. I, I think it was actually like 10 minutes straight of me just spamming the F11 key and it not going into the right boot media but it looks like if I do it for long enough, it eventually does work. There we go, look, we are in TrueNAS scale. We are now actually loading in a Linux TrueNAS version finally on this machine. I've been wanting to do a tutorial on this for a long time and I'm very excited to see it. So this is just screaming through the regular setup stuff. What's going to be important is down at the end here, it's going to tell us what the IP address is because I not only plugged in the IPMI port, but I also plugged in a separate NIC for the device. 
So TrueNAS is completely controlled over your local area network connection. And so you do need to have a network connection to do anything on it. All right, and so just like that, we can see what the user interface is at. And so let's just go ahead and open that up. Was it 49? It was 49. And now log in with the root and that root username and password you set up originally. And just like that, we've successfully installed TrueNAS Scale. All right, and so now we are in the TrueNAS Scale dashboard and we can see our networks up and everything like that. The one thing I'm gonna do in this video is talk about our storage pool and just create one really quick. This is going to be a dummy one that's just super basic and what I would re recommend for most people. And that is going to be to select all of them and I'm going to create a pool. We'll call it test bench. I don't like spaces. And we are going to copy those over and I'm going to set them up in a RAID Z1 array. And just go ahead and create it. It's going to erase everything on that pool. And just like that, we've got it set up and we've got our first storage pool. Okay, so I'm gonna stop the video here just because it's gonna get long and there's a lot better stuff to go over. I will be doing my next video on the settings I do for every single TrueNAS box I build. And so we'll go over that. And I'm also then gonna be going over SMB and your first time setups and everything like that. All right, well, I hope you found this video interesting. Stay tuned, there should be a playlist down below for all the TrueNAS scale setups. And go ahead and leave any other tutorials like see me make in the comments below. And have a good one, bye.